Let's talk some Sixers on this Tuesday. You're watching Philadelphia 76ers. Now, I'm Chase Sr., and coming up, Paul George talking NBA free agency, explaining his decision on his podcast as to why he left the Los Angeles Clippers and signed with Philadelphia. First, we are having an epic July sub battle between two rival teams in the NBA and two rival channels inside the walls of Chat Sports. 76ers now has had the best couple of weeks stretch in channel history. So many videos and shows popping off. Really appreciate that. And our sub numbers going wild. We have picked up 1,200 new subs since July 1st. And New York Knicks now only 742. Let's continue to add on to that victory. Hit that sub button right now. We're giving you shows and sometimes multiple shows every single day. And you don't want to miss our coverage. With that, Chip Chase talking Paul George and Paul George talking Sixers. Paul George going to be rocking the number eight with the Philadelphia 76ers. He debuted that number over the weekend on a brand new podcast. And I think that new jersey looks fresh. Of course, he did say one of his favorite players, Kobe Bryant, who used to wear the number eight. That went into his decision as to why he chose that jersey number. Why did he choose to sign with the Philadelphia 76ers and leave the Los Angeles Clippers? In my opinion, the Clippers made a mistake with their offer as far as the money, as well as the years, and they elected to go all in on Kawhi Leonard and sign James Harden. Really, what they should have done, run it back. They're already without their first round picks over the next several years, so you're already handicapped in that way if you are Los Angeles. Why not just bring back Paul George for that duration of time? For Philadelphia, this is a huge win, obviously, to land one of the more marquee free agents in franchise history. If you want to argue against that, at least in recent franchise history, here's what went into the decision to flip-flop coasts from West Coast to East Coast. Paul George saying this, just to put it out there, I never wanted to leave L.A. Initially, I was not trying to leave Los Angeles. L.A. is home. This is where I wanted to finish at, and I wanted to work as hard as possible to win a championship in Los Angeles. That was the goal, to be here and to be committed to the Clippers. As it played out, though, the first initial deal was I thought kind of disrespectful. So the first initial deal was like two years, 60 million. So I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Two years, 60. That's crazy. I'm not signing that. Can you imagine if you're the Clippers, you've already invested all this money. You're going to be opening up a new arena. You failed to reach expectations. You already have a very expensive roster. And you've already gone all in on the current iteration of that core. So to let Paul George go, you try to replace him with Derek Jones Jr. and Nicholas Batum. You pay Kawhi Leonard, never available. You pay James Harden, never contributes in the playoffs. I think that Paul George had the right to be upset. He was the best player on that team last year. An all-NBA caliber guy who on both ends really had a career season. More from Paul George on leaving LA. He said, no, I'm not taking that deal and... They say, we want you and Kawhi here long term. We want y'all to be here. All of that stuff. Mind you, this is before the season started, maybe October-ish when negotiations first started. As we kept going, it was like they would go up inches, 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 where it was 44, 45 million per year. But this was a couple of months in between before it got to 40-something. So I'm still like, nah, I'm not doing that. Then I hear wind of what they're going to give Kawhi, so I'm like, just give me what Kawhi got. They didn't want to do that. Let me get to the end of this year, and we'll discuss this again. Season ends. I finish healthy. 74 games played. Had one of my most efficient seasons, so now we're going into negotiations, and they bring it to three years of buck fifty. basically what they wanted to give Kawhi. And I see where the Clippers are kind of coming from here. It's a risk to pay Paul George, 34 years old, injury history, but you don't reward him for having, as Paul George noted, one of the more efficient seasons of his NBA career where he was one of the best two-way players in the entire NBA. More from Paul George here. Still, it wasn't about the money because 
when I went back to have the negotiation at the end of the year, I presented the three years 150, no trade. I'm taking less, but at least I know I'm here. They didn't want to do a no trade. So then I'm like, all right, well, then it only makes sense for me to do four years 212. At least pay me my money. If y'all are going to trade me, y'all going to trade me. But at least now I'm not in a situation where I could have gotten more had I just gone to free agency, then just take this deal where y'all could ship me. They didn't want to do that. So now I was like, I'm open to entertaining what's out there. And of course, entertaining what's out there resulted in this meeting with the Philadelphia 76ers. So, Chip, I just think at almost every level here, Clippers just kind of messed this all up. And like I said, like you've made the trade for Paul George. You went all in for Kawhi Leonard. You went all in for James Harden. You already gave up your draft capital. The future might be bleak whether the signings work out or not. So why not just commit the financial capital to Paul George here? Yeah, it's definitely a little confusing. And they definitely messed this up, in my opinion, unless they just didn't want to pay Paul George at all. But to offer him two years, 60, I mean, Paul George said that was disrespectful from the jump. Yeah. And that kind of started in motion even before the season started, like, like, okay, that's what y'all think of me? Two years, 60, that's it? And then, you know, we heard all the reports coming out that the Clippers didn't want to pay Paul George more than what they gave Kawhi. But Paul George had initially said, okay, well, I'll take that. But then they took too long to offer him that deal. But he still comes back at the end of the year and says, okay, you know what? I'll take less years. I'll take less money. I'll do the three years, 150 which again is less than the max he could have gotten, but it's what Kawhi got. I just want to know trade clause, so I know I'm in LA because I'm taking the discount to stay in LA. I'm not taking the discount to eventually get traded somewhere else. Yeah. But they didn't want to do a no trade clause. That's it. That's according to Paul George, that's the only thing that stopped him from signing that three years 150 with the Clippers. So definitely a little weird, especially considering they had that whole new stadium opening up and they're re-signing Kawhi. They paid James Harden. It's like you're already spending all this money, as you said, Chase. Like, why wouldn't you just want to pay Paul George? Clearly, they messed this up, and PG had said, like, after that, it was kind of weird, the dynamic between him and the Clippers front office, and always respect, of course, as a business, but then it just didn't feel right coming back. So, right. look, they clearly messed this up, opened the door for Philly, and Philly was willing to give him that money, and look, that's how he's here now. Yeah, Daryl Morey and the Sixers brass flying out to the West Coast. He had Paul George and the Allen Iverson vintage printed shirt 2001 MVP was on that shirt they made their presentation and they really blew Paul George away and he's about to talk about that next here on the show so that is what we're going to get to just coming up around the corner because a lot of people are wondering how did Paul George go from the Clippers to the Sixers here and it's really working out let's tell you about this deal thanks to our friends at Fanatics first and the Sixers making their summer league debut last night Ricky Council is tremendous. I think he scored 17 straight points in the fourth quarter for the Sixers. Jared McCain looking the part. And I'm not going to compare him to Tyrese Maxey because Maxey's a lot faster. But McCain operated on the floor in a very Tyrese Maxey way. They have similar size. They can both score at all three levels. There's playmaking there for himself and others. The alley-oop that he threw to Adam Bona was fantastic. Bona looking like a freak athlete out there. I'm intrigued by what McCain, Council, Bona can bring to the Sixers. If you want your Jared McCain jerseys, they're available right now. He's going to be rocking the number 20. Shout out to Markel Fultz. That didn't work out. Brian Dawkins, though, in Philadelphia, legendary number 20, my favorite eagle of all time. Get your jerseys today, chatsports.com slash McCain. We'll attach that link to the pinned comment of today's show. Paul George on the Sixers here. It was just the idea of playing with such a presence in Joel Embiid and then a fresh start, new opportunity. I was pretty open on the conversation and the decision. I think you know stuff was kind of a stalemate with the Clippers, which opened me to looking at other teams, hearing other programs out. And ultimately, it was more so just the idea of one of the best point guards in the league, one of the best, if not the best, bigs in the league, and Joel Embiid. And look, I'm not going to brag here, but we've been all over this all offseason. And we've been all over the Sixers offseason and the moves that they've made. We talked ad nauseum about bringing in Paul George. How it was a great financial situation for him. He's indicated that. How it was a great basketball situation for him. 
playing with Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid. He also specifically mentioned Nick Nurse and what he's been able to do in his coaching career. We talked about drafting Jared McCain and signing Caleb Martin and waving Paul Reed. That's why you subscribe to the channel, my homies, because we're all over it, baby. Paul George on the 76ers meeting, which we were live waiting to see what the result of that meeting was going to be for 10 hours last Sunday. I had that meeting with Philly Sunday night. Oh, yeah, we know Paul George. We were waiting. David Blitzer came, Josh Harris, Elton Brand, Dr. J, bro. I had Dr. J in my crib. That's crazy. Shout out to Peter Dinwiddie, Daryl Morey. The majority of the Philly front office was there at the crib, and it was a great meeting. Just an organization that was like, man, you're our guy. We believe in you. We want you here. There's no more perfect pairing with you, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey together. I felt it, and it just felt like, all right, this is where I'm going to spend the next chapter of my life. They sold the city. They sold the team, the organization, the fit. It was just an opportunity I could not pass up. Look, in life, you want to feel wanted by your employer, by your significant other, by your friends. The Clippers showed they didn't want Paul George. There was not that level of dedication. The Sixers, going back a year ago, according to Ramona Shelburne, have been aligning the Ducks in a row to go after Paul George. They maintained and saved the cap space, delaying Tyrese Maxey's extension, not making a big move at the NBA trade deadline because they wanted Paul George. So often for us as Sixers fans, we've seen them swing and miss and not land their big-ticket free agents. They landed Paul George. They went all in. They were aggressive. They made the convincing argument to PG-8 or some people are calling him 8-Ball Paul, which it's not going to happen, but it's kind of hilarious, that he's the perfect guy for Philadelphia, and they got the deal done. Let's go, baby! Paul George on the 76ers' title chances. And here's that shout-out to Nick Nurse, who was my number one head coaching target for Philadelphia. It wasn't for Jay Wright last year. Nick Nurse is as good as it gets. And by the way, Nick Nurse coaching Summer League last year. How cool was that? Nick Nurse is as good as it gets in coaching. He's won at many different levels. I already talked about how good Joel is, Tyrese is. Now you're mixing yourself, Kelly Oubre. I guess they don't have a beef chip. That's good. I think we have a hell of a starting five, and then we got veteran guys coming off the bench. You know, everybody wants to win. I think you have a good mixture of veteran and young guys. I think Jared McCain will help. Really good player out of college. So it's just a good mixture of everything. This is the most excited that I've been for a Philadelphia 76er season in a long, long time. And that is not a hyperbolic statement to say that I'm the most excited I've been about a Sixer season since the early 2000s with Allen Iverson, because I haven't felt as though Philadelphia has had a true chance at an NBA championship for a long while up until now. That starting five is legit. You have talent, you have creating, you have defense, you have an elite coach, you have star power. Daryl Morey is always trying to land three big stars when he constructs his rosters. He's been able to do that with Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, and Joel Embiid, and I know that the Boston Celtics are coming off that NBA championship, but they can be had. Philadelphia can match up now at the wing spot. They have the talent to take down Boston, the coaching to take down Boston. I think Philadelphia is now more talented than the New York Knicks. I can't wait for this Sixers season, and they really have a chance to do something special. And for the first time since Daryl Moore has been running basketball ops for Philadelphia, he hasn't had to undo what was done before him by Brett Brown and Elton Brand. Now he is steering the ship. He's putting the team together as he sees fit. He landed his three big ticket stars. Now they're on the same team. You have some depth. You have that elite coach. It's all there for the taking. And 76ers fans should be elated and pumped up about the possibilities for this upcoming season. And can the Sixers get past the second round for the first time since 2001? This is the realest opportunity they've had of getting over that hump in a long time since Allen Iverson was balling out for Philadelphia. Paul George on Sixers fans and a message to Sixers fans. I want to be there. You're going to get a 100% max effort out of me. 
I look forward to just being in front of that crowd. You know, it was interesting. My agent told me this. He was like, you know, Philly, one of the destinations where historically the fans are all about their team. You haven't played for something on that scale. So I'm just looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to embracing that and playing for y'all, working as hard as I can, bringing that two-way player and just winning. Like, I'm trying to win. I ain't won yet. I can't say that I'm a champion yet. I want to be able to crown myself as a champion, so I'm going to work hard as hell. I'm going to push big fella Embiid. I'm going to push Tyrese to be better and just try to build something, man, build a championship team. That has me even more pumped up. You know, Paul George understands it. Sixers fans might be the most intense fan base in the entire NBA and maybe the most difficult fan base to play in front of in the entire NBA. That's just the reality of it. And if I'm an athlete, I'm embracing that intensity. I'm not folding because of it. I'm not going to be like Tobias Harris. I want to embrace it like Maxi and Embiid. You win here. You are a legend forever. You don't win here and you still just play hard every night like Allen Iverson. He never won a title. You will be remembered and you will be revered forever. And if Paul George, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxi, Nick Nurse, Daryl Morey deliver a championship to the city of brotherly love, they will be honored, celebrated, revered for eternity. They will never have to get a meal or a drink ever again. And I hope that they can end that title drought that has been lasting since the 1980s when Dr. J, Moses Malone, Mo Cheeks, and Andrew Tony won titles during that historic stretch, which before that did include a lot of collapses. Get the job done. And it all started with this offseason putting the pieces in place. Chip, let's go. Ah, I am so excited. I can't wait to watch this team, man. Yeah. Just hearing Paul George talk about it. It is such a perfect fit. The Sixers clearly wanted him. I mean, Paul George talked about, there was a video, sort of recruiting presentation they showed to Paul George that Meek Mill and Kevin Hart, Saquon Barkley, Lil Dicky in the video. Mike like, Trout, Don Staley. Mike, yeah, yeah, like they clearly <laughs> wanted him here, right? Like for a year now. So he's here. So let's make it work, man. It's an exciting team. It's a talented team. Paul George, he knows what it takes to play in a city like this. He understands. He's been around for a while. He's been through it all. Ups and downs of the NBA, major injuries, some little bit of playoff success, a lot of failures as well. He wants to win, man. He's hungry. Everybody on this team is hungry because they haven't done it. And this is the year to do it. And, you know, he's getting older. The Sixers actually told Paul George, you know, we hope you're here after this four-year contract. We think you can play until you're 40. So they're very high on him, obviously. I'm very high on this team. I think they can get it done. But they got to go out and do it. Because it's a bunch of guys that haven't been able to get it done individually yet. So can they come together? Nick Nurse obviously has gotten it done. So can he get this group to that point? We'll see, but I am just so excited for this season to start. We're still so far away, but man, I, I wish it was starting tomorrow. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. Yesterday's show on Monday, we picked up 153 new subscribers as we are on that pursuit to 20,000 subs. Can we beat that number here on today's show? You see the ticker here to my right. Hit that sub button, man, for informative, entertaining, insightful Sixers coverage. And we'll be back later today with another show.